All right, so today on my like once every five year videos, I figured we can go over points. I don't use points often. Uh, it's 2022. I think they belong in the trash and you should put in a any cheap ass electronic ignition is going to be way more dependable and require less maintenance than points. Any of uh, the older generation isn't going to agree with that, but it is what it is. So let's go over my procedure for setting up points. Because if we look in the book, like I say to in a million of my other, I don't know, four videos, um, doesn't really go over like initial timing. So we're going to go for that. So first thing that we need to do is here we located our points. Cool. That's behind. You're going to have some kind of cover. Goes over there. Pop the cover off. Points. Okay, so next thing we do is, this is the bike we're working on. It is a 70-something shovel head. A friend of mine pulled it out of a groundhog hole in a barn. And we're not sure the last time it ran. Uh, we're not sure what year anything is. Frame doesn't have any numbers. Heads are titled as a 66. The timing mark, which I'm about to show you, looks like that. So you have this. What you need to do is you need to get that to show in your timing mark. Left side of the engine, there's going to be this bolt. goes in there. Take it off. Find your timing mark. The way you move your motor is you pop it up into fourth gear. And you take your back wheel and you just smack it. In fact, yeah, I didn't want to move that. You just smack your back wheel back and forth. And you can watch as you rotate over. And you want that mark close to 12 o'clock as you can get it. You want your spark plugs out. And we need to make sure we are at TDC in the front because you can be 180 out. Can't go in any further on that. Make sure the screwdriver wasn't just too big. Yep, there's a piston right there. I guess I should show you. There's a piston right there. So we're at top dead center. Another way you can tell we're on the firing stroke is I've popped our covers off and you can see both of our valves are shut. Visually you can see that they're shut. So next thing that we're gonna do, now we can come over and concentrate on our points. You see you're kind of opening up right now. Perfect. So we want to grab the feeler gauges that I just lost. Here they are. Feeler gauges. 020. So you take those and you slide them right in between that gap. And they should nice and easy, right? Any way you want to go in, nice and easy. 020 is what you set those to. And the way you set those, take your screwdriver, you can pop this loose, just pop the torque off of it. And then you have this spot here where I can pry it down if I need to open it. I can pry up if I need to close it. I don't need to do any of that. I've already set this, okay? So if we get in real close, you can see, where's something I can point with? It's not my fat finger, okay? You can see we have this fiber piece. We know our timing's right, and we're just coming up on our compression or our firing stroke. So this wide lobe is the highest lobe and we want our fiber piece to be up on top of that firing lobe. Okay, so now we know that. So, the way that you need to do this is you take your test light. I can't find my actual test light, but uh, hook one into the ground and the other to positive. You can hook it to the bottom of your coil. I just kind of snip it, boink, right, right in there somewhere. That'll work just fine. And you can see everything still perfect. And I like that because a lot of these timing lights will have like a pointy end. This one I just lay it on the ground. It's going to light up when I want it to. Okay, so. All right. Now I just turned the ignition on. Okay. And we are already firing. So this timing might be just a smidge off because we want that light to be just off. It's coming right up to fire. Okay, so we're going to loosen that. We're going to loosen that. We're going to drop the screwdriver. Oh. 
You guys can't see it, but I picked that up and did a really cool flip. Show how good I am with tools. Okay, and then we just grab the capacitor and we can move that. Okay, so on. All right. Now the points opens. All right? Can you guys see that? Points are shut. Light is off. We're flowing voltage through. Now, points open. Light is on. All right? Points open, no fiery. Points closed, spark plug goes bang. All right? So we want it closed because we want that spark to happen right now. So right there, and you can kind of see we're just before it opens up just before we get on that high lobe right so we'll put that back on I'll demonstrate one more time grab the capacitor light no light light no light light no light right there okay Tighten her down. So you're good to go. Another things to look for on your points, and this bike should fire now, but I actually have a Dyna ignition in the mail. So I'm just doing this because I'm bored. So points are closed. We're off of the Y lobe, just about to open up. She should fire. Now, a couple other things to look for if you still don't have spark. This capacitor, they can go bad from sitting for God knows how many years. Your coil, they can go bad. Same thing from sitting for God knows how many years. Easiest way to do that is with a spark plug tester. You know, I just plug this in. It's as easy as it looks. One end goes in the plug hole. The other end goes on the spark plug hit the go button and it lights up. The other way you can do it, the tried and true method, is spark plug in the uh, boot, ground it out to something. If you have somebody over that you don't like, tell them to hold it by the metal and ground it out and hit the spark. Your friend's gonna scream, you'll know there's spark. If you're doing it by yourself, hold it with a pair of pliers, ground it out to something. And if there's a nice blue spark, then you're good to go. Okay, so some other things that can go bad, like I said, those coils, there's a way to test them. So we come over to our setup here, to my beautiful, beautiful work area. You take your fluke or any kind of multimeter and you set it over here to horseshoes. What that is is ohms, so we're gonna measure resistance, right? I've already clipped one end on here, so we're going to take the other. Your ohms should be 5.6, 5.5 for a good one, good coil. So click, and we're at 5.5. There's a reason this coil's off the bike. Yep, now you've seen that, right? I could take my finger and I can touch this and we're gonna throw our readings all off. So there's five, five. It, I got a new one coming. <clears throat> all right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test a capacitor. So the way you test your capacitor is you have it on a non-conductive surface and we're gonna to touch, same thing, we're gonna be on horseshoes and we're gonna to touch here and I'm gonna to touch here. Now you gotta give me a second because I gotta take this contraption and put it on that contraption. Enjoy some sockets. I'm clumsy as shit guys, so I'm doing my best. If any of these videos would ever get monetized, I would uh, spend it on camera gear, I promise. Okay, there we go. Move our thing over there, look at horseshoes. These should be 2.4, you should read anything but open. 
Oh, hey, would you look at that? This capacitor shot. You're going to see it, it, it should bounce around. You should see 2.4 mega ohms or milli ohms. And we got nothing. So this capacitor was shot. I did find another one in the garage. Believe it or not, I have spare parts of, uh, I don't throw things away. So this is a whole new points condenser setup. Another thing that you can look for, if we get in there, you see how those, uh, screwdriver, here we go. You see how we're touching evenly right there? It's flat, it's not rounded. You can sand those down. They don't need it too often. Um, something you could look at if your spark is weak. Let's see. Man, I really think that's about it on setting timing. Uh, other than this, we would just fire it off and see what happens. But uh, this bike is very, very, very far from being fired off. So it has uh, some questionable cork gaskets. Um, she needs some work. Just something I thought I'd show you. I don't know, I might go over more basic maintenance as we try to get this thing fired up. Anybody want to see an SNS Super E get rebuilt? There's three or 400 videos on that. Or I know I gotta rebuild this master cylinder. I don't know, I haven't seen any videos on that. Um, this whole bike needs rewired, but I'm probably not going to make a wiring video. I'll bore you guys to death. So, I don't know. Oil changes, basic maintenance, transmission changes, maybe adjust the clutch, uh, adjust the primary belt, rebuild the rear brake. Simple shit. I don't know. I, honestly, guys, I'm on the fence. I might post some more shit. I might wait five or six more years, but... I hope this point's timing helped somebody out. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys later.